is YChart. I love, love, love YChart and I'll take it and I'll put it in the comments uh, in a second. I'll link it in the comments. So what I found that you can do is the holdings. You can look up the different holdings of a company. Now, when we have um, stocks, right? And y'all went off and y'all found the sector ETFs and y'all learned the difference between an ETF, an exchange traded fund, and an index, right? So it just trickles down. The index is going to hold multiple companies or like, like multiple companies in it, right? Like the S&P 500 has 500. Um, so it's going to hold all of those in there. Now, when we go and we want to invest in Apple, we'll use Apple. When we want to go and invest in Apple, we can buy one share of Apple, okay? And we become a shareholder. We own a piece of this. I promise y'all, y'all, I'm so heavily invested in Starbucks. And every time I go through that line, it takes everything in me not to tell them people that I own this. I own this place. You give me that extra caramel drizzle because I, I'm a shareholder, okay? Take everything in me. We own a piece of this company when we invest in it, okay? Uh, now, when we go in and we're looking at the ETFs, the ETF is basically like an index, but in a different sense, right? You know how the index will hold multiple companies in it? The ETF will hold shares of a lot of different companies, right? So when we go in and we look at those set, well, we'll look at that in a minute. So let's look at, first we'll look at Apple. I just went up to the search bar and you pull up Apple, you do all of that, right? And then I want to come over and look at the, uh, the key stats first. So you want to come over and you want to look at the key stats. And the some of the stuff that you want to look at, and this is when you're interested like in investing in a company, right? Some of the things that you want to look at is the revenue of this company. You want to know like how much... Uh, and the revenue is how much are they making, right? We want to see how much are they making year over year and every quarter. You, you want to be able to see like every quarter, are they uh, making money or losing money? And then obviously the year over year is going to show you, uh, you know, you get like the bigger picture. You're seeing it from year to year. Uh, you also want to be able to look and you want to pay attention to their assets versus their liabilities, um, their free cash flow. Right. And just being able to do stuff, uh, going in and looking at stuff like this. But all of y'all were asking me those questions in there. And I loved it because um, we really got to go in there and talk about it. So you definitely want to look up their uh, the financial their financial statements. Now, that's for that. You can also invest in the ETFs. And a lot of people say that it's best to invest in these ETFs because instead of spending a hundred and I think Apple's will say Apple's at hundred and thirty dollars to buy one share of Apple, you could invest in SPY. I know all of you have heard about SPY. You could invest in SPY and you're getting share, you're getting a percent of Apple, um, Google, Amazon, Meta, all of this stuff, right? So when we want to look up like the holdings in an ETF, you come over here, you just type it in again and you pull up the holdings. And it'll pull up uh, the top, their top 25 holdings right here. Isn't that kind of cool? And you can see like what percent uh, are they of the of these companies are they holding in there? And you'll be able to see like what the price is right now and the percent change that it's making. Uh, I believe this is daily. Yeah, this is like the daily percent change that it's making in here. And you'll be able to see that. Now, to me, you need to research. Obviously, you need to research everything. Now, I am not in like an investor like we have people that we know like how many people y'all who's heard of wall street trapper we've all heard of wall street trapper right he is like the fundamental analysis like we we love wall street trapper i love following his content um if you haven't heard of him definitely make sure you go on instagram and follow him because he gives really great content as far as um investing and looking at that I'm looking at this, y'all, uh, y'all, my newbies, y'all haven't heard of uh, Wall Street Trapper? Well, I know you have missed him. Okay, perfect. I want to make sure y'all, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought, listen, I, I love his content. Now, am I on his level when it comes to the investing? No. However, 
I do wholeheartedly believe in what he says. Like you, you need to go in and be and do this research on these companies that you invest in. You have got to as and even these ETFs. You know what I'm saying? So when we come in here now, I want to show y'all. Uh, y'all found the. XLE. I know all y'all went in there and y'all found out that was the sector ETF for uh, for the energy sector, right? So XLE. Let me hide this thing. Why is this up here? XLE. And then I want to show y'all this other website that I'm obsessed with. Don't worry, I'm going to link it in here and I will send it um, with the recording after class tonight. So this website's called Finviz. You can use the free version and it's beautiful, it's great, it's, trust me, you'll love it. So the main thing I like to use this for is this stock map right here. So you come here and you click on the map. And what this stock map is, remember we kind of talked about this, is it is going to show you, this is set to show me the S&P 500. All of the companies that's in the S&P 500 and it breaks it down. So you see here at the top, we have technology. This is the technology sector. And then we have the communication services sector, consumer cyclical, consumer defensive, energy, real estate, utilities, basic materials, right? I know y'all went in there and did y'all's homework. Y'all found all the different sectors, right? So each sector then gets broken down into industries. Each one of these uh, sectors gets broken down into industries and you see it right here. So the technology sector, and again, this is for the S&P 500 specifically, the technology sector has the consumer electronics industry within it. And then we see, well, what monopolizes it on the S&P 500, right, is Apple. Then we come over here and we have the semiconductors industry. Now, semiconductors, this is like, these are those microchips, okay? We, listen, we love microchips. And just because there has been many, many a webinar where I have shame shamed our leader, President Biden, one thing that I love that he did in quarter four is that he bought over 600 thousand jobs to the U.S. for a, um, I think the correct word to use is like factory, um, to bring microchips, to bring the production over here, to start manufacturing our own microchips. Because if you don't know, we're getting them from China. And you should know that we're not really rocking with China right now, right? So that, that's great. That is great that we have gotten pulled, that we are bringing that um, over here and creating jobs at the same time. So Kudos to him. Just, you know, I got to say that publicly since we 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 have many a recording of where I'm, I have said else about him. <laughs> but so in the semiconductor industry, my personal favorite is NVIDIA. Listen, y'all, I love me some NVIDIA. Can't wait to get y'all in the Discord because y'all going to be trading NVIDIA with me every week, basically. I love it. Um, and then we also have AMD, um, Micron, Qualcomm, Qualcomm. Some of you have probably heard of that or INTC, right? Uh, Intel Corporation. You come down, uh, then you have like the information technology. Uh, most notable, some of you would know about IBM, right? Uh, we have software like uh CRM. Y'all see CRM like when you see it on your computers and all that, right? That's Salesforce, the software infrastructure, Microsoft. Microsoft might be my favorite. NVIDIA is my favorite to trade hands down. Microsoft might be my favorite stock on the market. It just might be my favorite stock on the market. And I hope, I hope by the end of this webinar, I get y'all as hype about it as I am. Um, Oracle, Adobe, and so on and so on, right? When we move over to communication services, this is where we'll see like with the internet content, Google and Meta um, and entertainment, we have Disney, Netflix, Comcast, Charter, uh, Warner Bros. Um, when we go over to consumer cyclical, this like internet retail as well, we'll see Amazon, eBay, Etsy, um, in the auto manufacturers, we have Tesla, GM, Ford. I absolutely love Ford. Um, I think that Ford is a great investment. And you see here in the box, it's a $12 stock. But I think now, is this anything that you're going to see a crazy return on um, by the end of this year? No. But I do believe in its 
longevity. I think it's, a, um, I think that's what I, I love Ford and I love to trade it too. Um, then we have like the home improvement where we'll have Home Depot, Lowe's, uh, restaurants, in consumer defensive, we'll have our discount stores like Walmart and Costco, Target, Dollar General, uh, beverages, tobacco. Autria is an amazing company to invest in. I definitely love Autria. Over here in the heart of the stock map, we have healthcare, of course. Uh, with the drug manufacturers, y'all know Johnson Johnson, Abvi, uh, Eli Lilly, Pfizer, uh, Bristol Myers, all of this, you have your healthcare plans, CVS, United, United Health Group, just so on and so on, right? And we have the, well, I really want to show y'all every sector. So let me stop saying so on and so on. But over in financial, we have like the credit services. This is where we're going to see the, obviously the credit cards, Visa, MasterCard, American Express, PayPal, okay? PayPal is in there. Remember this, okay? PayPal is over here in the financial in, uh, sector in the credit services industry. We have insurance, most notable Berkshire Hathaway. Uh, in the banks, y'all ain't gonna lie. In the financial sector, I'm not that well versed um, when you get down to doing all of this because it just, what am I gonna say? Well, yeah, I'll say it don't really interest me that much to, to like in everything that they do. And here's the thing, y'all. You don't have to invest in 50 million stocks to see a profit. You just have to find the right stock, especially sometimes you have to find the right stock at the right time. Do your research and invest in it, right? Um, and to bring Trap back up, one thing that I love about him is most of his portfolios, he teaches that he doesn't have anywhere, he has no more than between like five and eight stocks like you you don't have to do you don't have to invest in these crazy crazy things that are worth like these crazy crazy amounts to be able to generate profit okay you really don't um because let's not forget we can buy more than one share uh so let's see um and then we have the banks jp morgan wells fargo bank of america and city group um let's see so in industrials i'm loving some industrials this year I will not lie to you all I believe I will be investing quite a bit in this industry in the aerospace and defense industry and this is just because um I just believe that there's going to be a lot of movement in the defense uh if you pay attention to the defense bill that was just passed they got just about a trillion dollars and um they're going to be putting out a lot of new military vehicles. So my, I'm, I'm over here with it. One of the most notable ones in there is Lockheed Martin. Now, yes, that price is accurate. It is, it is $458.99. <laughs> so I own it, but it is a great company to invest in as well as trade in um, if you have the capital to do so. Now, over here, we have Boeing. And Boeing has sold me. They make airplanes. And I was just like... They do a lot of other stuff, but they make airplanes and Boeing has me sold. I started investing um, into Boeing around November. One of my OGs actually um, just kind of pulled it up one day. It was on her list. And I just, I have been in love with it since. I don't trade it, but as far as investing in it, I have been putting, I've, I've been spending a lot of time uh, with Boeing and doing research and they are making some moves, y'all. They're making some moves. Uh, one of the most notable is that they just did one of the largest orders or aircraft orders with United Airlines. Um, and they are also building quite a bit of military uh, planes, different type of jets and all of that. Um, under this defense bill as well. Boeing uh, got a really good deal with them. So I'm in love with them. And then another one that this Minty put me on is, um, is going in here and looking at John Deere. Now this is the farm and heavy construction machinery uh, industry with inside of the industrial sector, right? Uh, is looking at Caterpillar and John Deere. Now y'all, I won't lie, I had, a, I had a little bit, I was trying to decide which one I wanted to go in. And Caterpillar got it. Caterpillar is out here making some moves. Don't sleep on them. Do not sleep on them and what they are trying um, and the things that they are going to do. Um, we have the railroad industry, waste management, so on and so on. Now we have real estate. Over here, I will not lie, I'm not that 
I am not that invested in real estate. I believe I'm in, I have AVB Avalon Bay and I'll have to pull it. I always forget which one it is. Not that invested in the real estate or real estate, but that's again, I haven't done the research enough um, to be, uh, to go in it, but I do have one mentee who is in real estate right now. And so I know that she's going to pull me in this direction. So I'm really excited for that. Now over here, this, this is probably my favorite sector. This is probably my favorite sector. The energy sector, baby, the energy sector investing in this last year in this sector was just the best thing that I did. And I absolutely love it. So before I show y'all this sector, let's, I'm going to come over here. And if you look over here on the left, we, it is set to the one day performance. So this is showing us like the, the profit of today, right? The profit, uh, the percent profit child, y'all know what I'm saying. So I'm going to move this to the, mm, typically I wish I could do the year to date, but what year to date is, is the start of the fiscal year to where we are now. The start of the fiscal year was uh, last Tuesday, right? So this isn't that. So what I'm going to do is the one year performance because it's going to show me the past 52 weeks. So what I did, okay? Now there's um, there's two categories of companies like when it's on the market. We have value companies and we have growth companies, okay? Now a value company is, we'll just word it as this is just that. It has a lot of value in it. Apple is a value company, okay? Now you're also gonna have growth companies. These are companies that um, they have great growth potential. They ain't there yet, but they got amazing growth potential and I would say for growth potential, I would say what, which one when I, well, honestly, it would be Oxy. I would have said that it, it would be Oxy it, <laughs> before this year, like Oxy was a, uh, a growth stock. Mm. Trying to think, what could I say that you all, would, we'll stick with Oxy. Yeah, we'll stick with Oxy in here. Okay, now. Is this the typical way to do it? No. Is this how I did it? And I figured, and I go in there and figure it out? Yeah. And y'all be wanting to know my opinion. So here it is. I have, of course, I'm invested in value companies, right? I'm invested in Apple. I am invested in Google. I'm invested in Amazon, Meta, Microsoft very much so in Microsoft, you know, Walmart, like things like that. I'm invested in those. I like to call them like the name brand stocks, the ones that people go in and do. However, I personally believe that there are some times that we have to adjust our portfolio in order to get through that period in the market. And one of those times was last year. We were on a two-year bull run. And remember, a bull market is it's uptrending, right? So the difference between a bull market and a bear market, my favorite analogy is when you think of a bull, the way that a bull attacks is it bends its like attacks its prey is it bends its head down right hooks them by their horns and then lifts them up in there so a bull market is going up it's uptrending when we think about a bear market a bear stands on their uh, hind legs and then come down to attack their prey right so a bear market is downtrending so after COVID I know y'all don't heard about the 2020 COVID drop and how everybody made that bag when it came back up. Okay, blessings to the most high for that one. We went on a two-year bull run. All, all things, you know, listen, that's just the market. It's not the end of the world, but things can't, it's, it's, we can't just, the things can't just go up continuously, right? It's okay for things to come down. And then that's when we'll enter into a bear market. And it also happens when we send billions of dollars over to Ukraine, you know, we're going to go into a recession, like probably just, you know, just, but anyways. So what I will do is I like to look at the year-to-date performance so the one-year performance or whatever, and I want to see what is outperforming the market. What's outperforming the market? Because maybe that's what I want to be invested in this year, right? So was I, now obviously as Apple and all of these major tech stocks and these major companies were coming down, was I buying the low? Of course, but I was putting more money into that energy, like things like this, the energy sector into healthcare to keep me afloat last year so that I could make some money last year, okay? Because over in this account, it was bloody. It was looking a little red. So I needed to come over here to the green 
so that I could make money last year, right? And I, I believe in that. I, I believe that it is perfect, perfectly fine to do that. And if you do your research on these companies, you're never going to just be like, you just invested in something whack, right? You're not going to be investing in anything whack. So now let me ask y'all this. Why do y'all think that the energy sector was uptrending all last year and outperformed a majority of the market? Why do y'all think the energy sector outperformed? And if you, um, y'all know what we talked about with the participation, y'all say what y'all want to say in there. But if you're a newbie and you don't want to type it, you can turn your mic on. But why do you think that the energy sector outperformed the market last year? So if we're in here, my bad, my bad, my bad. So if we look at the energy sector, right, we have the oil and gas integrated. So in here, we have Exxon and Chevron. Uh, over in here, we have the oil and gas. Um, Betty, what does it stand for? Uh, gosh, Tesla and the rise of electric cars. I like that. Okay, okay. But so what is what does that have? So Tesla is over here in consumer. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. We had a lot of bad weather, freezes and everything. Okay, I like that, period. So utilities is going up, period. Inflation, period. Come on, Cam. Come on, Cam. With your 17, 18 year old self. Come on. What else? What else? So let's see. And so if we look in, come on, I showed y'all the, the big clue right here. We got Exxon Chevron in here, right? We got Conigal Phillips, uh, Oxy which is a Occidental Patrol, they, they do it, what, what, you know, what, what else, what y'all thinking? What else y'all thinking? We have the oil and gas equipment and services. We looking at like Halliburton. Um, and if you're from, from where I'm from, you know about Halliburton. It's the oil field company. What's going on in the world with gas? What's going on in the world with gas, y'all? Gas prices are increasing. Why are the gas prices increasing? Beautiful hint, Miss Kim. Thank you. Demand is greater than the supply, period. Now I wanna, but I want you to explain that to me though, because I want to make sure that you saying that and that's not something that we've, you know what I'm saying? Not discounting you, but explain that to me. So what do you mean by the demand, the demand of what is greater than the supply? The pandemic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I like the way your brain thinks. Of course, you would think go towards the pandemic because you are a nurse. The oil demand period, Melissa, okay. Family of the fam, thank you, thank you, period. Okay, but y'all missing the big thing. Big Daddy P, Putin, what is he doing? Where do we get most of our oil from? Where's most of that coming from? Russia, Russia. Are we able to get that? Are we able to get that from Russia? No. So that's where that supply and demand is coming in, in there, right? So that is going to cause prices to increase. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. If something is cheap, more people are going to buy it. If it's on sale, people going to buy it, okay? So the lower something is, the more buyers you will see. And then the second that you people start buying it and more and more and more and more people buy it, then what happens? If something on sale, but then everybody buy it up or it sell up, then what happens? What happens to the price? It goes up. The more buyers that step in at a low price, the higher that price is gonna go up, okay? Because they are demanding this service. I always use, I don't mind using myself for an example. The more that y'all demand my services, the higher them rates are going to go every time, every time, right? Because we can do that. We do that with our businesses. Businesses do that with us, okay? Now, when something is gets really high, when something gets to a higher price, 
this is when we're going to start seeing um, sellers come in, right? And they're going to sell this back. And so that's when we're going to see, uh, they're going to sell their supply back. And uh, we'll use the garage sale example, right? When we have an excess supply of whatever in our house, and we've already, it's gotten our use out of it, we have a garage sale. We sell the supply back at a cheaper price. We sell it back at a cheaper price, right? We're giving it back out. So it's the same thing on the market. The cheaper uh, something is, the more buyers you're going to see step in at this low price, and then they are going to demand this price and raise, where did that come from? And then they're going to demand this price, uh, demand this uh, product, the service or whatever, and the price is going to increase. Okay. Uh, so buyers create demand and sellers create supply. Okay. But we'll get into that. We'll get into that. So yeah, big, you know, Russia is rushing, rushing, Russia in, Russia's rushing. Okay, whatever. <laughs> it's doing all of that stuff. So we're going to see the energy sector is going to go up. If gas is increasing, then these gas companies, right? These oil and gas companies, their price is going to be increasing on the market as well. So this is probably something I want to be invested in. This is probably something that I want to be invested in um, in a year or in a time in the market when everything else, when we'll say 80% of the market is decreasing, maybe we might want to come in here and look at what's not decreasing, right? Um, and then, of course, we have like the healthcare sector in there and all of that. So that was my method, okay? Now, I didn't just come in here and just pick something and be like, oh, okay, well, you know, Oxy is $64. Let me go buy some of that. No, I, I did my research on it, right? Now, y'all know how we also looked at the sector ETFs. So we know that the sector ETF for energy is XLE, right? So if we look at Exxon, so on a one share of Exxon is going to cost me $108. One share of Chevron, 175, uh, Oxy, 64, all of these numbers, right? Now, if we come back over here, over here on our pretty, pretty Y charts website, and I come over here to the holdings and I look at this sector ETF. Look at this. I could get in the sector ETF is worth what? $87. And I could get shares. I could get, it has Exxon at 22%, Chevron 19%, uh, Sally's, wait, no, that's not Sally's. SLB at 4%, Conoco, so on and so on and so on, right? I absolutely love investing in the sector ETFs. I enjoy investing in the sector ETFs. I get a piece of, I get a piece of it all, right? Versus if I was to look at a uh, spy, right? Everybody, everybody loves spy. Nothing wrong with it. I think there's absolutely nothing uh, wrong with it at all. But if we're looking at the holdings of it, again, Apple is going to give me five point nine percent. And it's its top holding, right? And it's uh, weighted at five, we'll say 6%. And to own one share of this ETF is $387. Where, why don't I just, we know that that sector ETF is XLK. And I go to the holdings, I'm getting 21% of this for 125. I can get Microsoft, NVIDIA, doing all of this, right? A basket, period. I love the sector ETFs. I love looking into these, okay? And so I highly suggest that you go in there and you look at these because as you're doing this, you're going in and doing this research and you become more um, efficient in it. How many of y'all pay into a 401k right now? And how many of y'all sitting up there thinking about, damn, why am I paying into a 401k right now? because they are making money, a TSP match. Yeah, okay, I mean, we got IRAs though. Did you guys think about it? It's a middleman somewhere in there, right? Like you a piece of a piece of a piece. Who, so who's making money based off of you doing that? When we can come in here and do the research ourselves, is is we built for this. We can come in here and do this ourselves. We can do this ourselves. Cause you, but you know, all right. So, did y'all like that assignment? Did that take y'all places? Did it take y'all places in there? Y'all like that assignment in there? What y'all thinking? What y'all thinking? 
And do y'all have any questions? Because I love a good question. I love a good question. What y'all got? What y'all got? What y'all got? What y'all got? I haven't seen um, um, my guy who signed up last night with his cousin. Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? Y'all with me? Kanye, are you with me? Period. Uh, oh my goodness. I'm sorry. I cannot remember your name. I saw you in here earlier. Uh, Cedra and Devon, uh, Devin, y'all with me? Y'all with me? Y'all feeling me? We don't leave anybody behind. Listen, don't feel like, hey, I will go back. Anything y'all want to look at? What is your name? Because you still ain't saying nothing. Let me make sure. Don't, hey, it's only 30. It's only two. And two of these devices is mine. So it's only 28 of us. Karif, there you go. Karif, you with me? Miss Ray? Risha? Y'all just don't know. Wendy, I know you at work listening. So, okay, okay. I was going to say, y'all, yeah, y'all going to learn. I want spots. So I can make sure it's no point in moving on if we're not all together. I still have to do the homework because I worked all day. Mm -hmm. Devin. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So let's let's get to it, y'all. So I have this here just so y'all can y'all can see it, right? You have the video, you can pull it back. This is what we're gonna be going over. Will it be in this order? Maybe not. I am ABD. But let's get into it. So what is the stock market? What is the stock market? It's a network of stock exchanges where traders and investors buy and sell shares of public traded companies. Okay, we we get that. We we get what like what the stock market is. It's kind of like you know because my Mimi she calls the grocery store the market, right? So this is the market. The stock market is like a grocery store of uh, it's like, it's a grocery store of um of different companies that we can go in and invest in. And we have the privilege of being able to go in there and trade, right? So they, they help companies like raise money so that they can fund their operations by selling these shares of stocks. And y'all, when they do that, it's literally passive income for them. When these companies uh, be, go public and by going public, like you might've heard the term IPO. Like if you're watching any movies or anything, it's the initial public offering. And that's when they first go on the stock market and people can start trading. Listen, they get paid for that. For us going in and trading, these companies get like, for every time that we place a trade or we in placing a trade is like, whether we buy a share of it to hold it as an investment or we buy a share to just turn around and sell it to make a quick buck on it or whatever it is, right? They get paid doing this. It helps them create and sustain their wealth, okay? But it also gives us an avenue to come in here and to sustain wealth by trading these companies as well. But from my lips to God's ears, and I will forever say this, I will be publicly traded because I, I need this. I need this passive income wealth right here. Y'all do go out here and trade trade the value of my company. Thank you, but only buy it, but only buy it. <laughs> okay, so these companies, like they're raising the money on the market um, by selling, right, the shares to the investors. So these stakes are known as the shares, okay? So... I just think, but like I said, I just think it's very smart of them to make money off of others coming in and trading it. Like, it's genius. It's genius. Whoever invented the stock market, like, how genius of you. Now, who invented the stock market and who profits off of it the most? Smart money, quote unquote. You'll hear people call it smart money, okay? Smart money is like, this is if you've ever heard wells, um, hedge funds, professional money, institutions, whatever. And when we're talking about institutions, these are um, like banks, right? Listen, they are the ones who are actually controlling the market. And I'm saying they, and it's sounding all like conspiracy theory is and all that stuff, but it's it's true. They are the ones that's actually controlling the market, okay? They know so much that we don't know, that we are not privy to, right? And so you got to think about it. Like, even when we look at a company like Apple, Apple isn't just like this store that we go in and we buy these iPhones and like these phones from, like, I, 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 I 
can't say Apple run the world because my big dog Microsoft trying to come in and get that. But my, Apple does so much more than just sell us cell phones and tablets. Okay, they have their hands in so many pots. Like it is the largest company in the world. It is a multi-trillion dollar company. You know what I'm talking about? Like this company is they 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 are a part of like. Our credit unions considered uh, our credit unions considered as smart money. Um, well, like banking institutions, right? Like, so but when I'm saying banks, I'm saying like let's think like J.P. Morgan, it, like that, type, like that is an institution. You feel me? Did that make sense? Did that answer your question? Tell me if not. Okay. Period. Uh. So yeah, they move the market, okay? So we don't say if you, of course, we don't say uh, if you can't beat them, join them. No, okay? We know that we need to join them so that we can beat them, okay? Because these banks, they just, uh, they just, they they run, they run everything. They The money runs everything, okay? But all right, so let's get into it. Let's get into it. Everybody with me? Y'all good? We done got past this first hour. Y'all good? Y'all good? Because now we finna get to it. And this is where I want y'all to ask all the questions that y'all want to ask. I can see it in the chats, I promise, okay? Ask me everything that you need to ask. Tell me to slow down if I need to. All right, so market structure. Let's start off looking at market structure. So when we're look, when we go in and we look at the charts, and I'm not even going to pull it up yet because I don't want y'all to be like, Lord, what did I get myself into? But let's look at this. This is how we'll see the stock price. Like when we're looking at the chart, this is how we'll see it move. It is always going to move in between points, like between highs and lows, okay? We'll call it like highs and lows right now. And we want to keep up with the structure because this is going to allow us to see uh trading opportunities right so let me let me just break this i'm over here reading my notes so i can stay on soon but let me just do me okay now so we're gonna have highs and lows of course right so when we're up here at a point uh where the stock is at a high this is where we're gonna find resistance it is going to resist this stock price from moving any higher right now, when we're down at a low, this is like our floor. This is support. It's supporting the stock price from falling any further, right? Now, what did we talk about? If we, when we were talking earlier, am I going to find, for off of what we talked about earlier, am I going to find more buyers at support or at resistance? What y'all think? Would I see more buyers at support or at resistance? Support, period. There y'all go. Okay, period. This is where I'm going to find my buyers. We will find buyers at touches of support. Why? Because we buy low so we can sell that drunk car, right? Like, let's think about shoe retailers. Like, I, I'm, I'm going to get in the, in the shoe game. I got to. Like, these resellers is making a bag. All I got to do is be first in line at finish line and, and turn, what? Come on. I, I got to, got to. But yes, and then at resistance, this is where we're going to find sellers because uh, especially like, um, and then let's look at it specifically for the market, right? Like if I got in low and it come up to a point of resistance, I'm going to sell. And then everyone starts selling and this is when it'll buy or it'll sell off, right? Everyone starts selling back these shares that they bought and giving that supply back to the market and it'll come back down towards support. Now, Let's look at these two definitions, supply and demand. The world has run on supply and demand since the beginning of time, like literally. Everything, everything that we do is supply and demand. Y'all coming and taking this class is an act of supply and, or it's, a, it's an example of supply and demand, right? Like I have the supply, which is the, the knowledge, right? And y'all are demanding it, right? 
So, and again, the more of y'all that are coming in and demanding it, the more I'm going to raise those rates up every year. You know what I'm saying? It's literally supply and demand. We see it in every transaction in the world. So law of demand is simply just telling us that the higher the price of an item is, the fewer the demand will be, right? And that's because if it's up high, less people are trying to buy it. The law of supply is the higher the price something is, the more uh, sellers that we will see, the higher, uh, the more supply that we're going to see, right? Because people are selling back at this higher price. Y'all with me on that? Y'all understand those? Because when I tell y'all, y'all need to understand supply and demand, because I'm going to make y'all my little supply and demand traders. Y'all getting this on the supply and demand? It's really very simple, right? Like you, you gone, it's very simple. Cedra, you with me? Period. Okay. Now, since we have that supply and demand, supply and demand is the border around support and resistance. Remember, support and resistance, resistance is highs, support is um is gonna be the lows, right? Supply and demand, border, support and resistance. Like your supply zone is going to be formed here at the top when it's at a point of resistance because people are going to be giving that supply back to the market, right? And your demand zone is going to be down here at support or we'll find support at our demand zone because people are demanding this and in in buying into it and pushing the price up, right? Very, very simple. Supply and demand is the structure and we find points of supply and resistance within the structure, okay? But supply and demand is structure. Now, when you think about the word structure, give me some synonyms for structure. Let me put a chat up on my phone because I keep going back and forth. Give me some synonyms for, uh, for structure. What y'all thinking? What y'all thinking? And Wendy, I'm so proud of you for being in here, um, even after working. Um, and uh, organization form foundation. There we go, Miss Kim. It's the the foundation of program organized, right? Like, and when we think about if it's organized, it is always, it is going to consistently move in between the structure, okay? So the frame, right? It is the framework of everything. And I love that framework because I just watched National Treasure, right? And so, and I, that is one of my favorite movies. Uh, that's actually probably my favorite movie is National Treasure 1 and 2. Love that movie Um, because I, I love history. And when we think about, the framework of this country, right? And who structured the framework of this country. Let's take it there, let's take it there, right? And who still runs that structure and the framework that was instituted way back when, right? If we, we have got to join them so that we can beat them. I know y'all feel me. I know y'all feel where I'm coming from. I'm trying to pull the chat up on my phone. Okay, here we go, here we go. No, don't reclaim hosts. Chat, period. Notes, because don't get off track, girl. Hmm. Okay, I'm here, y'all. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. I'm sorry. All right, now, when one of the most beautiful things um, that I love about the structure, like when we're looking at the framework, is that this price is literally going to just, like, it, it don't own anything that we look at on the market. It is just going to move in between supply and demand. It literally moves in between supply and demand. Why? Because all of these companies are making profit and losing profit based off of supply and demand, you know? So one of the most 
And be, since we know that, and we know that we can go in there and there's going to be ways where we can find the supply and demand on the charts, and we're going to get to that, there are certain things that we want to know about it. Um, so that we'll be able to catch these movements and then make us that bag, right? Now, one of the most for sure things is if we break structure, and that's whether it is the supply zone or the demand zone, it is always going to pull back to retest that structure, okay? It will always pull back to retest that broken structure. So let's look at this example right here. If it's down here in this demand zone, it comes up. And remember, because I know y'all read y'all's infographics, if it is a green candle, this is a bullish candle that opened low and closed high, meaning that buyers were in control, right? If the price is going up, buyers in control. So it broke this structure because this was a supply zone and it pulled back to retest it. Now, the reason why it needs to retest it is because if it broke this as a supply zone and it came back to retest this, let the newbies answer it, right? Give them hints, but let the newbies answer it. What is this now? As it retested it and then take and took off, is this a supply zone now or is it a demand zone now? Which one? Retest. Like it, it came back, like we see right here, and it came back into this structure that it previously broke. So this is called a retest, or you'll hear me say it pulled back to broken structure. It's going to be the demand zone, right? Because it held it. It held it. If the price went up, that means buyers stepped in, right? So this broken supply zone has now turned into a demand zone and held it, and it went off to the next supply zone above it right because this was previous resistance over here and went back up to that all this does is move back and forth in between supply and demand that's it and that's literally it and every time it breaks structure i could never tell you that enough every time it breaks the structure it will pull back to retest and you will understand very very soon uh by the end of this week you understand why that is so important to remember it will pull back to retest, okay? Now, why would that why would that possibly be? Like why would we see it doing that? Okay. No, come back notes. <laughs> okay. Now, the reason why so if we're down here at this demand zone, we're just going to see it kind of filter out around here and then we'll see it break out. So, over here, who do we say is the market movers? That's going to be the institutions, right? Smart money. We'll use the phrase smart money. So smart money steps in and what they, no, we ain't even going to say it yet. We're not going to get there yet. Don't worry. It'll pull back retest. We'll do that. Ignore me, y'all. Ignore me. Now, this is an example of QQQ, which is an ETF. We know what an ETF is. This is QQQ, and this is on the one-day chart. Now, this is trading view. This is that trading view. I told y'all, y'all gonna y'all gonna have to have trading view in this class. My my OGs and my sophomores, y'all let them know, uh, let them know what y'all think about trading view. And let them know that they need to have a charting, to have some charting platform locked and loaded, ready to go by next class. Where y'all at? Hype them up. Hype them up, especially my sophomores. Not the way, not uh-uh, not y'all coming in here knowing y'all made me tell my OGs to be quiet last month and y'all ain't <laughs> uh-uh. Yes, make sure y'all have that, okay? Because we 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 gonna get to that charting. We're getting down to the charting. But so see here now, down here, I have this marked off as my demand zone. The reason why we're going to get to it, but y'all see here, it pushed up every time that it comes down here, it goes back up, right? And here, so that's why I always label it as green, because it, it green as go, it went up. And then my supply zone, where it, it's going to meet resistance at, I mark it off as red. So you see it came up here, and look, it pulled back to retest it to make sure that it can now hold this as support as a demand zone. Came back. Couple years later, pull it back and it lost it. Now look right here. When it broke this supply zone, or well, it was a demand zone, right? When it broke it, it pulled back to retest it and it was able to hold it as resistance. Came down, 
So it broke it again, but when it pulled back, it was not able to hold it as resistance. Came back down to my demand zone, pulled back, and then came back up. It's working its way back up here, right? It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. It literally, literally, literally just moves in between structure and it will always pull back and retest it. Now, can you time? When will it pull back to retest it? No, you cannot time anything in the market, but just know that it will pull back, okay? Now, let's look at the four stages of smart money movement. We're gonna have four stages of smart money movement when we come in here. Uh, do I still have Miss Brittany in here? Okay, here. Okay, so we're going to have the accumulation stage, the uptrend, distribution, and the downtrend. Okay, now the accumulation stage, let's just think of it literally. What does accumulate mean? When you're or accumulate, yeah, when you're accumulating something, you're grabbing it, right? You're, you're, you're grabbing this up. The uptrend is going up. And when in the distribution stage, when you're distributing, you're giving it back. And then the downtrend, okay? I, when I tell y'all, I promise y'all that this literally moves in these phases in between strike. Oh, jeez. Praise break, praise break. So y'all, come on. Y'all, y'all hype me up in here. Y'all hype me up in here. Hype them up because we just, we get into it. I have goosebumps. I have the goosies. I love this. So let's look at the accumulation stage first okay so in here when it is when we're down here and we see that this is accumulating what they're going to do is they're going to keep it locked in this really tight range right here so you'll hear people say that it's ranging or it's sideways trading if y'all have ever heard that like right in here listen that is a retail trader phase phrase okay we are not retail traders we are institutional traders OK, we don't trade like the average uninformed trader and investor in here. We are learning how to trade like the institutions so that we can have the knowledge that they have and gain the wealth that they have. OK, period. So when they're accumulating, they're literally just removing supply of stock from the market. And like I said, we just want to think about it in literal terms. Accumulate means to collect. So the demand is coming in gradually to overcome and absorb all of this supply and, um, and to support the stock like at this level, right? Like they're just, uh, they being smart money, they're doing it there. So what they do is they buy as much of the stock as possible without really moving the price. So what they'll do, you see how the price attempted to push up here and it met resistance came back down, met support, resistant, and it's just kind of going in here. It's literally just sideways trading. So what they do is when the uninformed, they're attempting to push this up high, but then institutions will come in and they'll sell. They'll sell. They'll start selling their supply. So if the uninformed trader is pushing it up, but institutions, and we're talking about banks, y'all. So you know that when they selling, they they tripling whatever it is that people on the market is putting in to try to push this up. You know what I'm saying? They are literally tripling that and selling off to push it back down. Now, the reason that they're doing that is because they want to be the ones who are able to grab up all of these shares at this very affordable price, right? They want to be able to get the best price on these shares, uh, and they're basically, they're buying it wholesale. You feel me? Like, they're, they're buying it wholesale, and they're faking people out. So, for those of you who have traded before, who have traded before, and let me hear from everybody, OG, sophomores, my freshmen, all of that. Let me hear from y'all. If you have ever traded, and it's like been just kind of sideways trading, and every time it kind of came up to this high, you were like, you know what? Now's the time. It's, it's going to go up. And as soon as you get in, all of a sudden, the price reverses, and it go back down, and you done lost out, and you, and you lost some money. Who's done that before? Is charting on an iPad suitable, period? Yeah, I love charting on the on my iPad. Happened to me last Friday, lost 500. Sean, yeah, you make me sick, but I love you to death. Um, but it's all a learning. It's all a learning curve, right? I'm glad that you're in here. So only two people have done that? Okay, I was finna say, because let me make sure. 
right? And what they're trying to do, they are literally trying to get you out the way. They don't even want you to participate right now. They want you to get so annoyed with this. And every time that you think it's going to break down to the low, what do they do? They release a very large buy order in order to push that price back up. And they want to keep you in this range. They literally just want to keep you in this range. So let's look at this top infographic right here, where we're seeing that it is accumulating here. And then finally, it broke above. They released, they being smart money, right? They released a very large buy order, pushed the price up. And what does it do? It came back and retested it and then went off. And then it began its uptrend, okay? And then it began that uptrend there. Y'all feel me? I'm gonna make sure everybody here, you with me, you with me, you with me? Now, there's gonna be certain type of chart patterns that we can expect to see when we are down here and it's in the accumulation stage. And we got one, what do you mean by retest? Love that question. So let's look at this example here when we're looking here. It broke this level and it pulled back, right? So that's the phrase you'll, you're gonna hear, it pulled back, it broke supply, it pulled back to retest it. It has to retest it. It got to. And it might over here, it might retest it and not be able to hold it as support. Like we see right here, it wasn't able to hold it as a demand level and then go back up. It broke back below it, making this again a supply zone. And now we know that this stock is going to head down to the demand zone. You feel me, Miss Melissa? Turn your mic on. Ask me, ask me, ask me. Oh, thank you. Okay, period. All right, so we got that there. Now, some of the chart patterns that we can expect to see, we're going to have like double bottoms, triple bottoms, and all that in there. I sent that infographic to y'all, but we'll definitely go over more. But like I said, y'all need to be y'all need to be looking at those and getting familiarized with them, okay? Because we, we definitely going to be talking about chart patterns a lot. Now, right here, this is an example of a triple bottom. This is an example of a triple bottom. See, it came down once, went up twice, three times, and then went off. So a triple bottom is a bullish chart pattern, right? Which again, we can, of course, we expect that. If we see, so look right here, this is an example of a double bottom. It came down once, twice, and then went back up. This is an example of a double bottom right there. So of course, this is now verified to us. We can definitely confirm this as a demand zone because we saw this double bottom here. And we know at demand, this is when buyers are gonna step in and push the price up. All right, now after it accumulates, then we're gonna see an uptrend, also known as a rally. You'll hear me use the word rally, right? So it accumulated right in here, right in here. We get this break because they released a large order, broke above, pushed back or pulled back to retest it. It's strong enough to hold it as support. And then it went up. Now, when they first released like this really large order, it's going to be random. You can't time it. You don't know when they're going to do it because, again, they this this is what they know. We just know we are learning what it is that we need to look at in order to catch it, right? So when they when they release that, they 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 not in no rush to do it because they've already bought it cheap. So they want to maximize on their profits and build this position up slowly. So you're going to see like, it'll just be like a large candle where they like released it. And then this is when everybody else has been like, oh, hmm. okay, Apple's starting to move up. Let me go look at Apple. And then more buyers come in, more demand is created. The price gets pushed up more. And it's literally crowd psychology. So who... Listen, let me ask y'all this. When you come to crowd psychology, it's the best example I can give y'all. If you're in the mall, all of a sudden you turn around, you hear 300 people just screaming, running past you with fear on their face, what you gonna do? Are you gonna stop and ask questions is you gonna take off running too? You just gonna take off running. That's crowd psychology, right? And that happens on the market. That happens on the market. And that is, okay, I'm running. And that's what that's what we see. And that is what they, uh, obviously that's like what they're trying to do, right? Uh, 
Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, so. Next, we'll have the distribution phase. Now, this is after, gonna come after the uptrend, right? It's gonna get up here to the top at resistance, and then they're going to start selling off. But they're gonna do the same thing, like how they formed this range, also known as a base. We wanna call it a base, right? But how they formed this range when they're accumulating, and then they're just like kind of slowly locking people in there so they can get the best price. They're doing the exact same thing in the distribution phase. They're gonna lock people in there um, and they're gonna be selling off the more that people are trying to push up. Because when the price starts going up, this is when people get FOMO. This is when greed comes in. Like greed comes in the higher a price goes because people are running trying to catch it. They like, oh shoot, this is going up. I see people making money on this stock today. So they're gonna run and try to catch it. And when you try to push it up out this range, what are they doing? They are selling it. They are releasing, they are selling these large orders back. They are trapping you, they scooping it up and then it'll finally break that range and that's when we'll get that downtrend, okay? Like smart money, they literally capitalize on two emotions, fear and greed, fear and greed. You create enough fear, people are gonna sell. You create enough greed, people are gonna buy, okay? And they want you, they wanna create greed so that you're trying to buy up here in the distribution and then they wanna create fear down here when you're, uh, when you're trying to sell it off when meanwhile they accumulating. They accumulating, they scooping all them shares up at this cheap price, okay? And we are gonna learn how to do that because if they can do it, we can do it and we can do it 10 times better because y'all have me as a mentor. Lucky, lucky you, lucky you. Okay, so y'all with me? Y'all with me? No child left behind. Y'all with me? Y'all too quiet for me. Y'all too quiet for me at the start of the year. So is the uptrend the actual long green candlestick? The uptrend, we're just gonna, the uptrend is the move up. It's just the trend is moving up. So let's um, also, let's make this um, discernment here as well. Trends come and go. Trends come and go, okay? They come and go. Thank gosh, this isn't the 90s anymore and everybody has that maroon couch with the tan stripes on it and all that, right? That trend is gone. We're in the minimalist stage. We got these leather couches and doing all of that, right? Eventually this will be gone and we're gonna go back to the farmhouse decor and well, hold on, I got the men in here. What, what, what y'all be trending about? I don't know, snapbacks. Who rocks snapbacks anymore, right? That was trendy, it was trendy. Structure, which is supply and demand, is forever there. Structure is forever, okay? So that was a really good question. That was a really good question. Did I answer that for you, Cam? Period. Okay, so now let's get in here and start looking at some of these trends. Let's start looking at some of these trends, okay? And like what we wanna do. First off, don't ever trade against a trend. OK, there are ways that we can go in there and we can annotate where the trend is. And that's that's what you need to stick with. Trade the trend. If it breaks the trend, guess what? It's over. It's over. It's, it's going to form a new one. Now, there's three different levels. I was going to say types, but it's the same thing. But there's three levels to a trend. OK, we're going to have our primary trend. So we see overall this is a downtrend because this can either be uh, an uptrend a downtrend or a sideways trend. And a sideways trend is literally just a base. Uh, and that's where we'll see either accumulation or distribution, right? So on the primary trend, we see that overall, this stock is in a downtrend, right? The price is moving down right here. We see it, it's moving down. And so this, right, if this is my highs, as it's coming down, this is the highs. So this is the resistance trend line. And down here, this is the support trend line, right? Because resistance marks the highs, support re marks the lows of the trend, okay? Resistance marks the highs, support marks the lows of a trend. Supply and demand has to do with the structure. Support and resistance marks the highs and the lows of the trend It is too very, very different things. They are two very different things, okay? Very different. 
Supply and resistance go together. Support and demand go together. Don't let them S's go in there and trick you up, okay? All right, supply and demand, support and resistance. Okay, now, as it's going down though, right, it's not just gonna be just a straight shot down. We're just gonna see one candle coming down. No, as it's going back up, this is my secondary trend that it's making. Inside of this overall downtrend, there's going to be some points where it rises back up for a little bit, okay? It's gravity. It's gravity. It's literally just gravity. What, what goes up is also going to come down in the market um, eventually at some point, right? So in here, like, this is where we'll see my secondary trend. And then there's also going to be the minor trend, which I usually accidentally call the mini trend. But the correct term is the minor trend. You'll be able to go in there on your charts and mark off all three of those. I'm going to log off in a few do to work, period. You will have that recording coming up soon. Um, and I'm going to upload your class to YouTube today. I have classes back to back today. Um, so make sure y'all check out the YouTube channel because I did a charting class with someone today and he gave me a uh, to go ahead to post that today. So everybody say, thanks Raheem. Thanks fam. Thanks bro. No problem. I'll see you. Uh, I'll see you Wednesday. We'll see you Wednesday. Yeah. Y'all say thank you. We congratulate each other in here. We give each other flowers in here. We congratulate each other. We tell each other a uh, good job, all that. We, yeah, yeah, yeah. We family in here. Say that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now let's, let's get into this y'all. Now I'm going to, I'm, when I say y'all better turn the mics on, type of question, whatever you got to do, because I cannot lose you right here. I cannot lose you right here, okay? So let's, let's rock out. There are going to be two types of supply and demand patterns, okay? There's two categories. We have the trend continuous base and the trend reversal base, okay? We're we going to break it down. When we come in here and we're looking at the, uh, where are my notes at? No, I can't stay on track. All right. When we're looking at the trend continuing base, it's just what it says. The trend is continuing after the base, okay? So we see that the first move, the first move was a drop. It dropped, it downtrended. And then it formed this base. Again, we don't use the word sideways trading. In, uh, uh, it is forming a base, okay? It is basing. And then in this example, it ended up dropping. It dropped, right? So it was a drop, it based, and then they ended up dropping it again. So if we see this, then we see that this dropped, it's I mean, strain it, whatever, formed this base in here and then dropped. Did this end up being an accumulation or did this end up being a distribution? Which one was it? What y'all think? Take your best guess and don't worry because the OGs got y'all. They're going to help y'all out in that chat. It was a distribution period, Cam. Where's uh Thomas? Thomas, you in here? Uh, he had work till 11. Oh, okay, okay. Y'all see, do y'all see that in, uh, okay, so I have one answer in there. Let me make sure y'all with me. Karif, you with me? You and fam with me? Miss Melissa, don't, don't feel not now shame in asking a question, because if you don't ask a question, baby, you're going to be lost moving forward. I promise you, ask it all now. Period. Thank you for the question. Don't feel no shame, Miss Melissa. I promise you, everybody who took this class before, it's the reason why they back. Because they want it as well, the repetition as well. I understood what you mean. I just forgot the name for for what, Karif? So when we're looking, we'll just look at oh, hold on, child. At this whole example here. So the distribution is just going to be up here at the top. It's going to be at resistance, right? And they're going to start giving these shares that they bought down here. They're going to start selling these shares back because they're trying to push the price down, right? They wanna, they want uh, everyone else to sell off as well, sell this supply back to the market so the price will come down lower, why? Because then they'll be able to buy it at, buy it at a lower price again, rinse and repeat. It's just rinse and repeat. They accumulate it so they can push it up, make that profit, and then they sell it back off. 
back down towards demand and they accumulate it again, push it up to sell, make that profit and so, right, is rinse and repeat over and over. Period. Okay, so when we're looking at down here is volume. So y'all saw the volume annotated over here. Like when we get to looking at our chart, this is where you're gonna see the volume bars down here. The, these, these, these are the candlesticks uh, that are showing us the price, right? Down here is showing us volume. Now volume shows us the amount of shares that are and contracts, if we're trading options, right? Don't worry, we're gonna get into it if you've never done options before. But volume is showing us the amount of shares and contracts that are currently being traded, okay? Volume is not the amount of people that are currently trading. If you look and you see that the volume is 100,000, that is not the amount of people that are currently trading. It is instead the amounts of shares that are being traded. So if I buy one share of Apple, whether or not I'm trying to trade it for a quick buck or I want to hold on to it to invest in it, if I buy a share of Apple, that counts as one trade and that's one tally in the volume. As soon as I sell it, when no matter when I sell it, how I sell it, as soon as I sell it, that counts as another trade and that is another tally towards the volume. Okay, it is the amount of shares and contracts, not the amount of people, it's not the people. So when it is basing, it has to have low volume. We have got to see it have low volume. Now, remember what we said, when they're, when they're uh, accumulating or distributing, when they're forming these bases in here and keeping retail traders like locked in this tight range, they're not, they're not trying to like move the price too much, right? They're, they literally are hiding their hand because they don't want you to know which direction is going to break out. They don't want you to know. Why? Because then you'll be able to uh, make the same money that they're making. Um, and that's the part that I hate. Like when it's forming these bases, all you can do is watch it and just be prepared for it to break to the upside or break to the downside, right? Um, but like I said, one day though, when Wall Street Ben Black is publicly traded, I'm gonna let y'all know. I'm gonna let y'all know if I'm uh, which type of base it is. Although I think that might be insider trading now that I think about it. But shoot, if the Pelosi's can do it, I'm gonna do it. If she can do it with her husband, I can do it with my fam. So we wanna see it have that low volume. Now on the first candle that we do see break this base, like we finally see a candle move under the support that is formed in this base, right, at the lows, we want to see it with higher volume. It needs to all of a sudden come in like with some higher volume in here, right? We want to see that. And remember, when we break structure, it will always pull back to retest it. As it's pulling back to retest, it also needs to have lower volume, right? Because if this volume is high as it's selling off, we don't want the pullback to have just as much volume, right? Because if it had just as much volume, then we're going to be thinking it's going to go back up. But no, instead, this retested it and it was able to hold it as resistance and then it dropped. Y'all with me? So like when we're trading and we're looking to enter into a trade, the break and retest is going to get you right. The break and retest, right? This is the break. You wait on it to retest, and this is when you want to enter. As soon as you start to see it reject down here, you can enter here. Now, when you see it first start to pull back, you could enter right here, but this is the riskiest way to enter into it, okay? To enter into any type of trade. You don't even know anything about trading. Just understand that, right? Like on the, on the initial drop, as soon as you start to see it pull back, this is a very risky entry because it could come back to this retest, the broken level, right? It's broken level to retest it and then go up and you would have lost your money if you were taking a bet that the price was going to go down, right? So this is the riskiest. This is moderate to enter when you start to see it reject. And then this is the safest to wait for the price to come back down below here, because then this is verified that it is going to continue the trend. And, this, and in this example, the trend 
the initial trend was a downtrend, a drop. So this is a trend continuous base, right? You're going to see a drop, base, drop. Always pull back and then reject, right? And then it's just the exact opposite if the price is going up. The initial move is going to be this rally or an uptrend. It's going to rally, base, rally. When it breaks this, it's going to pull back to retest it, make sure it can hold it as support, and then go back up. And we want to look at the same thing when we're uh, with volume, okay? Okay? Now, I know somebody got a question. You could turn your mic on and ask it or ask it in the chat, whatever you got, but what's up? Let me make sure everybody with me. And this is just like we're, and again, we're looking at the two different type of supply and demand patterns that we can see, like when we're seeing the price move back and forth on the chart, right? One example, we can see a trend continuing base, where if the initial move is a drop, we'll see a drop base drop. If the initial move was a rally, we'll see a rally base rally. Downtrend base downtrend, uptrend base uptrend, right? Does mm -mm. the time frame is is it don't matter because this all the the time frame is on the same chart right it's all on the same chart no matter if you're on the daily or if you're on your five minutes the same chart you feel me when no I love when y'all ask questions okay oh here we're, and y'all know what makes me prouder? Y'all know what makes me so proud? Everyone who's in here asking, here we go. Here we go. Y'all got me hyped now. Here we go. And, and, and I'm going to say something. I'm going to say something. Although I know she's going to be mad. I know she's going to be mad. But everybody say hello to my mom. Everybody say hello to my mom. And I mean, y'all better say hello right now. Because not I got my mom in here. No, I didn't say you call her mom. That's, that's my mom. Say hi to my mom, I said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if y'all are wondering why am I a little bit more relaxed, y'all not hearing these words flying today, it's because I, I'm respectful to her because, yeah, okay, okay, because I still need her to buy me an air fryer. But anyways, uh, let's get to these questions. Uh, yeah, look, I was trying to make sure y'all, yeah, hi, Alexandria, Slime. here we go. Okay, so when the volume goes low when the volume lowers does that mean the number of tallies will be low no if the volume is so what is volume showing us it's showing us how many shares are being traded right so the volume is just if the volume is lower that means that there's not as many shares being traded so on the pullbacks we want to make sure that that volume is not as high right especially if we're looking for it to be um if the volume is low on the pullback, this is a good indication to us that it's going to be a trend continuing base, right? Because when it's pulling back and going the opposite direction, there's not as many trades happening. So there's not as many people wanting it to go back up, right? So we can expect to see this push back down soon if it has low volume. If it had high volume, we can expect that they're trying to push this back up, that buyers stepped in, right? that buyers have definitely stepped in and, uh, and they're trying to push that price back up. Will it move like that every time? Kanye is structure, it's forever. Supply and demand is structure, it is forever. It will always move like that. That is all these stocks do. They move in between supply and demand over and over for years and years and years and years and years. Will you ever see high volume against the trend? Yes, and then that is when we will see a trend reversal base, right? If we have a trend continuous base, then we'll have a trend reversal base. Like if we have a rally base rally, then we'll also have a rally base drop, right? So great question. Seems simple, kind of too simple. It ain't. Uh, y'all heard what he said. Now, I, I definitely need y'all to give me my flowers. If you've taken this webinar before, off of what he said right there, give me my flowers because y'all know that y'all know I don't mind asking you to give me my flowers off of what he just said right there because it really is that simple. Let them know. Let them know. Oh, I'm going to sit here till y'all hype me up. 
I want my flowers. Not the way I be giving y'all y'all's flowers. So I'm going to let them know it really is this simple. Thank you, thank you. But I want them the experience to let y'all know. Y'all very quiet on me today, my sophomores and my OGs. But moving on, moving on. Let me just give them the attention and whatnot then. Okay, so yes, we will have the trend reversal base. And the trend reversal base is where, again, we're just going to see the initial move is this rally. It comes up here to this base, but instead of continuing up, it dropped. And it's just that simple. Again, you never know. This is where it requires you to watch your chart. You have to watch your chart. You have to go in here and chart it, and we're going to get to that. And then you watch it. If it broke to the upside, come on, right? So now look in here. See, as let's look at volume, right? As it came in here, well, no, that's not a good example. Never mind. But yes. All right. Now. We're gonna look at swings, okay, y'all. We're going to look at swings and the difference in between swings and highs and lows. There is a big difference and knowing the difference will keep you in a trade versus uh, scaring you out of a trade. So a swing, yeah, I don't feel like doing that. We'll just look here. So. A swing happens when, so you see how it rallied right here. It pulled back. We see it pulled back and then it began consolidating, sideways trading in here, right? And so it's just bouncing back between it. Uh, it when it pulled back, it made this low, came up, made a high. And then we see it like pulling back to this low in here, right? But so today's open and close would be the top and bottom to use for direction for tomorrow. Is that how it works? We're not there yet. Slow down. Slow down. We're not there yet. So uh, we're looking at the swings. I'm going to take y'all down through there like piece by piece, piece by piece. So if we see this here, when this pulled back and it made this low, made a high, then right here, right? And it's still coming down to this same low. On this move, when it came down to this low and it came back, it moved past the high that it formed on this pullback, right? It moved past this high. The second that a low moves past previous resistance, previous highs, this turns into a swing low. And this is confirmed that it is going to continue moving up, that it will continue to move up, right? This in here is just a low because it did not come all the way back down to previous support. If it would have came all the way back down here and crossed past it, then this would have been a swing high. It would have swung all the way down from up high. And then this is how we know that it is no longer going to uptrend. The second that it passes previous support, this is now confirmed that this price is not going to move up anymore. It will not move up anymore, right? So same thing in here. On this swing low, it made this low right here. The second it moved past this high, this resistance, this is now a swing low. And we know that this price is going to continue moving up. It's going to continue to move up. Let's look at some examples in here. Same thing, really, right? We're getting in here. It moved up. We want to insert now down here. Shouts. Well, I would never say to answer. Mm, I'm risky with it sometimes, right? But I've been trading for a while. We are building our accounts. We're learning how to trade. So never enter down here when it's basing. When it's forming a base, whether it's distributing or it's accumulating, do not enter then, right? Because you don't know if it's going to be a drop base drop or if it's going to be a drop base rally. We don't know if it's going to continue or reverse, right? Until it breaks out of that base, you don't know what direction it's going to take. You just don't know. Um, uh, so to it, just, just don't. But this would be very risky. This is moderate when it does cross over this high, right? But this is what you want. You want it to break above previous resistance way over here. And you want to enter when it does not touch this resistance level that you'll have drawn at all. This is when you'll want to enter and grab this move. Grab this money. This is the money move right here. 
People always want to catch all of this. You want to catch all of this, but all of this, anything could happen in here. Anything could happen in here and you could get screwed. So you want this. We want to take the safest, most high probable plays ever that we can never time the market. So anytime that y'all ask me moving forward, how long will this take? You can never time the market. You never know. What is the most important rule to investing to do your research? Are we talking hours, days, weeks, months? You never know. You never know. So when we're looking at our charts, let me pull y'all over here to look at a chart. I tried so hard not to pull this chart up, but y'all forced me. Y'all forced me to do it. And somebody keep me on track because I'll, I'll pull up these charts and we'll be here all day, all day and all night. But I promised myself I would keep this class at two hours. I said I would keep this class at no more than two hours and I can do it. I can do it. So there are different time frames that we can set this chart to, right? Remember, this was in our introductory packet. We talked about I can come in here on my chart and I could set this for five minutes. And each one of these candles is going to show me the price in the past five minutes, what the opening price was, highest price, lowest price, closing price was in this five minutes, 15, 30, for all these time frames, I can set it for any time frame in here. So common sense would tell us that if I'm on my one day time frame, and each one of these candles is just showing me one full day of pricing in the market, right? That anything that I'm looking at on this higher time frame will last longer right? It is not going to take one day, one candle for this price to come from my supply zone all the way back down here to my demand zone. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. Um, and also for my babies that's in the, I know y'all see that right there. I know y'all see that right there. So uh, American airline below 1450 tomorrow. This is exactly what we wanted. I exited out of my call today officially this is exactly what we wanted so let's keep our eye on this below this 1450 um if you don't know what i'm talking about again don't worry you took this class we're gonna do it but those who know y'all know look at that a 4.3 percent move right we just need this to go down 63 cents so keep your eye below 1450 tomorrow uh and watch it pre-market because it should get some pre-market movement <clears throat> yeah right it looks really good okay now I'm going to show you all this example because I've learned that we really don't want all of this yeah we'll do this who can see your how can I minimize my risks when I invest so when you invest, as in when you're buying shares, um, how can you minimize your risk? Turn your mic on. Hello. Hey, hi, Kanye. It's nice to meet you. Hi. So what do you mean? Uh, like, like, how do I like minimize? Like what, like how much money I'm spending on it? Like if I say I, if I put twenty five dollars up there, right? Mm -hmm. Into a trade, or so when you say invest, when we invest, we're buying a share to own it, and we want to hold on to it. So are you talking about investing, or are you talking about trading? Because when we trade, we just buying it and uh, selling. Trading. So trading. Okay. So go ahead. Yeah. So if you put twenty five dollars into a trade, uh huh. And like, like, what if it is like going down when you bet it to go up, right? Uh-huh. How can you minimize that? First, first off, I know y'all hear it in his voice. If y'all, if if I don't, if I don't look back down at this chat and seeing y'all congratulating this this young teenager for being in this class right now, we got a problem. We got a problem. But that was a great question, Kanye. So we're going to get into that. It's called like risk management. So my biggest rule is never risk more than 10%. So you're going to forever hear me say, if I put $100 and that's leveraging, if I leverage $100 into a trade, I bet not let myself lose more than 10%. 
if it's, it's going to be very apparent when it's not going your way. Like the way I'm going to show you how to chart, it is going to be very, very apparent when it's not going your way. So you'll be able to stop yourself out. But then also, why would you ever, if you put in $100, why would you ever not want to, if it don't go your way, get back $90, right? So it's, we're going to learn risk management, but it's also psychological. The market is 90% psychological. You should never let yourself lose money when we're on a mission to gain money, right? So you just stop yourself. You just stop yourself. It's, the, it's like if you, if you on a date or something, I'm just, I don't know. My analogies be all over the place, but if you on a date or something and you go to the movie and Charlie, like, the girl, well, the the young lady, it's like, oh, okay, I want popcorn, I want candy, I want the, I want a slushy, I want the nachos and all of this. You are gonna be like, hey, 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 hold up, now I'm working with a, you know, we working over here with this hunger. You want the, you want the the side what you want over, here, right? You gonna stop yourself before you spend everything because maybe you're trying to. Well, you should be taking your butt home after that, but. You feel me? You feel me where yeah. I'm coming from? Okay. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank y'all because that's that was an amazing question. And it takes a lot of courage um, to ask a question in a group of people, especially when you know that you're in a class with mostly adults. So I'm very proud of you for um, being in here and I'm excited to work with you and see you grow. I've heard nothing but good things about you. Thank um, you. Mm -hmm. So what's the difference from consolidation and when it's choppy? It's the same thing, right? If you, but that's retail trader terminology. It is basing. We see chop, consolidation, sideways trading, all of that when it is inside of a base. You feel me? Yeah. And y'all, I know y'all see Cam in here saying repre represent for us. He is also a miner in here with us doing big things. And that is literally generational wealth. And it it almost makes me tear up. Y'all know I'm an emotional person and I don't mind hiding it from y'all because um, this is literally the mission of Wall Street Ben Black. We want to show them history repeats itself and we can do it, right? We can all do it. So um, I thank y'all for being in here. Y'all are very much so inspirations to us. Uh, and yeah, stay on it. Keep that hunger because I'm going to be on y'all's ass. Sorry, mom. All right. Uh, so when we're looking at the swings, we want to look at our charts and be able to like analyze the reasoning behind these swings, because we're literally watching supply and demand forces at war and being able to see like who's in control. So we got to remember like humans are the ones that are moving the market, right? So we got to get inside their head and understand their motives. Like we, we got to understand like what they're doing. So if we're at demands and we can expect, and we talked about the type of chart patterns we can expect to see, which is going to be like a double bottom. We're going to come in there and see it come down twice, touch that demands on twice and then go back up, right? We'll see a W or we'll see a triple bottom and it do it twice and we see like a W with an extra leg, right? If that's going to be at demand, what do y'all think we could expect to see at supply? And I'm going to need to hear from Cedra, Devin, um, Karif's cousin, and Miss Ray. I don't want nobody in Risha and SKH. I don't want nobody else to say nothing else. I need to hear from y'all, and we will sit here. Mics or chat, I do not care. If, we're, if we can expect to see double bottoms, right? And we're going to see like a W at demands. What do you think we'll see at supply? Peaks. And if, period. Yes. And seeing you know, Miss Ray, let me off the hook. Hello. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 a double top in M period. No, nobody makes it, Miss Ray. Nobody. Not even, no, I ain't going to call her out no more. We all know she in the building, which I think might also be probably one of my proudest things that I have. Listen, I'm, I'm just, I'm, woof, 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 the goosebumps of this class. I can't wait. But yes, if we see a W at, the, at demand, we, which is a double bottom, we can expect to see an M at supply, which is a double top. Y'all see this double top in here? So if a double bottom is going to tell us that it's going to go up, then a Sean, okay, that's Sean. If the double bottom is telling us it's going to go up, 
It's a bullish chart pattern, a double top. The M is telling us it's going to go down. It is a bearish chart pattern. Okay, so we just we want to be able to see um, see those in there, and we want to pay attention to the difference in the swings, right? Like the difference in the length of these movements, these pullbacks. So if this is rallying, this is uptrending, and we see this huge uptrend, but it pulled back to make this low, and it didn't it didn't even have to pull back much before it immediately began coming up. This is letting us know that buyers are dominating this trend. Buyers are dominating it. They just sold this off a little bit. This just pulled back just a little bit. And then this low turned into a swing low. Now, somebody tell me, why did this low turn into a swing low? Past recent, exactly. It came past recent uh, high recent resistance, whatever. As soon as it crosses previous resistance or support, this is officially a swing and go and take that thing up to your next zone. Take it up to the next zone. Take it to your supply zone. Or uh, we'll just say that for right now, right? And uh, now when it came down here, right? Look how much it rejected back down. It didn't just pull back a little bit because if it would have pulled back just a little bit, we can expect this is probably going to continue up. This rejected back down a lot. We still got to pull back to retest. And then this became a swing high because it crossed previous support right here. Because we see this made a low, so this support, right? It crossed the previous support. This is confirmed that we are now in a downtrend. Once it crosses right here, it is now confirmed we're in a downtrend. Pulled back up. It did not come back up here to previous resistance, previous highs. So all it did was pull back up to make a high. And then this high became a swing high because it again crossed previous resistance. So for my those of you who have traded before and you have an experience, you see how even just knowing that little bit of information right there will stop you from panic selling. You got to know what you're looking at. You got to be able to look at this chart and read the story. There is a story behind all of it. It's a story behind all of it, y'all. Y'all with me? Period. Cedra, where you at? Oh, yes. Paris, same house, period. There we go. <coughs> All right. Okay. Now, this is the same thing, right? We just literally are looking at um history, is just it just repeats itself. Y'all know, y'all know my logo. Y'all know my uh my whatever, I guess it's the logo, whatever you call it, right? History repeats itself. Wall Street been black. But yeah. History just repeats itself on the market. That's all it does. That's why you hear them called patterns and trends because they just repeat itself. It moves back and forth in between the structure and in between the trend. If it breaks a trend, all it's doing is forming a new trend. And we can go in there and we catch that, right? It's the same thing. It's just repeating itself. And smart money is capitalizing on muscle memory of the price pre of where the price previously rejected at because that's what retail traders are looking at. They're looking to the left looking back in past prices and saying, okay, well, it rejected here once. So, eh, you know, I guess this is where I'm going to take it at. But they're not really understanding the full story of it, but that's okay. That's okay. We're getting in here to understand the full story. So when they get faked out in there off of a pullback, that's all right. We still holding on to our position and, and, catching, and, and catching a bag, getting a bag. And we all love a, a good bag. So the more reaction that we get at the top of the trend is just showing potential weakness in the trend, right? The, the more reactions that we get up there, it's just showing um, potential weakness in the trend. The less reaction that you get at these levels up at the top. So when I'm saying there, I'm saying like at supporter resistance, supplier demand, right? The less reactions that we get there, uh, the more strength it's showing in the trend, right? Like if it has to continuously pull back up and it's just continuously retesting this high, it, it's probably not going to break above it. More than likely, it's not going to, um, more than likely, it, or it's not going to continue um, its move, right? We want to, if you just see this one pullback and it goes up, that's very strong. Uh, uh, 
that's uh, strength. <laughs> Can't get it. And that's the strength. So like I said, we want to compare the current swing with the momentum of the previous swing, as long as it's going in the same direction, right? Because comparing that is just, again, it's letting us see like, is the strength, is it um, of this move, is it weakening or is it strengthening? I don't know, y'all. I didn't read my word of the day. I have a word of the day calendar. I haven't read it for like two weeks, so my vocab not up there. It's not up there. But so we want to pay attention to this. Like this swing in here was a heavy little downtrend in here. This came, this pulled back quite a bit, came back up. But this pullback in here was much lower. It did not, it didn't have to, right? It didn't have to come all the way back down, which is beautiful because we wanted it to be a low. We didn't want this to turn into a swing high and come back down because we entered into this to push it up, right? So it just made this low that turned into a swing low. And so this is letting us know that like right here, the fact that this pullback was, uh, much uh, less than this one, that this move is going to continue up and is going to continue up for a while. Again, this is on any time frame that we're looking at it, right? But if we see this like on our daily time frame, we're going to expect for it to go up a long, 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 long while versus if we see like something like this on the five minute, this is probably something that will be a move that is probably going to happen like that day. All right, so let's say that we entered into calls after the swing low broke um, above like these recent highs right here, right? So let's say that we entered into calls here. Now remember that this is a risky right in here to enter like right when it does it because it could have come back up here to this previous resistance and then come back down. And then that would have made a, whoa, oh, not text. Mm. Shape. Because if it would have uh, came back up here, met this previous resistance, and then ended up coming down, right, instead of going up, then what it would have done, it would have double topped. Now see that? Because we don't want, like, we're not looking up here, but if it would have just came here, do, 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 and then move back up here, my previous instance, it could reject back down and do there. So again, that's why I say this is risky to enter here. The best thing to do is to wait for it to cross when it is officially confirmed as a swing low, this previous resistance, and then we want to enter here, right? That is the safest move. So, but let's say that we entered into calls like after this swing low broke, uh, it turned into a swing low, right? Broke above recent highs. And then once we see demand start diminishing at the top, we'd want to go ahead and exit this trade. Don't be trying to continue to take it up to the top when you just caught a beautiful move. It didn't chop around. It didn't do all this crazy stuff. You caught the break in the retest, right? It broke, pulled back to retest, and then you caught this safe move up here. Don't be trying to push it up even more past that. Why? Why? That is called greed. That is called greed. And what does institutions do? They play on that. They play on that. They are playing on your greed. The higher a price is moving up um, as a price, as the price is uptrending, right? They're playing on your greed. They want you to, to be like, dang, I carried it here. Let me, let me see. It's going to keep going up. It's going to keep going up. No. No, no, no. We want to go ahead and exit that trade, right? And then you can just wait for the reject to come in and enter the trade to the downside, okay? We caught it going up. Now just wait on this reject to come in over in here when it broke previous support, previous lows. Now you catch another trade to the downside, another safe one. It didn't go back up, so you're catching this whole move down here. You know, like there is no need to, to stay in these trades past your levels. Once something hit my level, that's it, that's all. Thank you, I'm out, okay? I made my profit and that's what we wanna do. Don't let greed get you caught up. Don't let greed get you caught up. Now it will, it will, cause it's just gonna happen. I've never met anyone who has not let greed catch them. I've live traded with some of y'all in here, with many of y'all in here. And y'all know I'll, I'll do some risky in a heartbeat. But also we have to remember that we have to trade according 
to our account. And that goes as far as uh, with how much we're putting out, with how much we're leveraging to enter into these trades, right? And the, as well as uh, risk management, like things like that. Like you got to trade according to where you at. I can do riskier things because one, my risk management is legit, right? I'm not, I'm not going to allow myself to lose too much, but also my account size affords me to do that. When I was building my account, I wish I would. I wish I would. It took me one time to blow one account. I blew one $5,000 account and that was it. That was all. And I, I will, I have never blown up an account since then because why would I? I, I want to make money, not lose it, right? Okay, so when you become a seller up here at the top, this is going to increase, like it, it is, it's, it's increasing the supply of the stock. And then that in turn is going to, um, that increase will in turn intensify like the imbalance that's favoring sellers over buyers, right? So y'all feel me on that? Like there's like an imbalance of it. Y'all with me? Y'all understanding the story? Let me know if y'all understanding the story. Y'all with me? We almost done. We almost up out of here. I promise. We almost up out of here. We almost up out of here. My first class is always a little bit of my longest one. Now we already pieced all that together. So we good on that one. We got like two more slides, y'all. We almost there. Okay. Is this the one I'm looking at? No, this one. Okay. Now in here. No, I don't want to do that. Actually, we're going to leave it right there. We're going to leave it right there. I think this is the perfect, this is actually the perfect place to end, to be honest. That is the perfect place to end. So, all right, y'all. We, we done covered a lot of stuff. We have covered a lot of stuff. Remember, you get these recordings. It's, it'll take about like 15 to 20 minutes for it to process, and I will immediately send it to you tonight, the recording, okay? I will immediately send it to you, I promise. It will only be available for 48 hours. Be proactive. OK, don't come asking me where's the video at when I'm telling you it's 48 hours. Do what you got to do. OK, do what you got to do. You need it. Do what you got. I, I'm aware. So do what you got to do. You got 48 hours to be proactive. OK, now what's up? I need. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I need uh, I need some questions in here. Who has a question? Who's, who's, who's coming in here feeling um, a little bit better? Whether you're returning or not, who's feeling a little bit better? Who's feeling hype? Throw an emotion in there. Everybody throw out an emotion in the chat. Let me know what y'all thinking right now. How y'all feeling right now? Right now, my emotion I'm gonna throw out is I'm feeling um, excited. I'm feeling excited. Hype, I love that. Motivated, period. Optimistic, love it determined let's you go Josh because hey Josh one of my mentees that's the one who bought up all my time that y'all are real upset about y'all know y'all know I'm in there what's up Matt hopeful period I love the hope I love the hope confident encouraged I love that I love that I will keep y'all encouraged I'm gonna dig in your ass if I have to sorry mom but I will I will okay I'm not I'm a hey I sent y'all out there to look and I'm like what's the difference between a teacher and a mentor okay teachers get fired for cussing y'all out I don't I'll feel better once I rewatch and take more notes period and it's also the first night right you're not gonna get it all but repetition is key so yeah do that um and feel more than free y'all so I know everybody in here is either my family the family or the family's family please email me if you have any questions oh geez you know that don't count for you but else please email me with the business questions, okay? If you have questions about the course, email me so that all the files will be there because you texting me, it's going to get lost in the sauce. It will get lost in the sauce in there. Um, anxious, Cedra, turn the mic on. Let's talk about it. I'm not calling you out, but I'm just saying, let's talk about it. I don't want you to leave feeling um, anxious, but I can also understand that. This is a totally new world, total all new information to you um, that you really just get into based off of because you know me and then you know what you see on social media but let's talk turn the mic on not anxious in a bad way just anxious like okay I'm I'm anxious to figure out like this foreign language it's like learning something completely out of the realm of anything I've ever um 
tried to learn. So I'm anxious yeah. to figure it out. I understand that. So let me ask you this. Are there any words that I said today where you like, girl, what? <laughs> no, no, not really. No. Okay. Um, let me make sure Cam and uh, Kanye, y'all, um, what about y'all? Are there any words we threw out, uh, I threw out today where you kind of like, well, let me see what's up with it. I see you turned your mic on, Frank. Give me one sec. Let me make sure Kanye and Cam are uh, here with me. Um, swings. Swings made me feel a little more uneasy at the end, but I'm going to rewatch and take notes, and I should be fine by. Okay, at the end, yeah, it's probably, and also, like, now these on here, when you go through and look at it, it's my, um, it's little notes on here, and, like, because you probably were, I'm just guessing, maybe like trying to read the infographic as I'm talking to, but I would say read the infographics after you've listened and comprehended like what I'm saying, because I put my notes on here, like on these for y'all. Yeah, that's how I started. I started off trying to take notes, but then I was like, just let me listen, and I'm gonna mm -hmm. take notes tomorrow on it, um, but it was just kind of like more like confusing at, at the end. But okay. I think I think it's only confusing because it was like I'm trying to like I'm still in my note taking kind of thinking. So I'm trying to capture all the information instead mm -hmm. of letting everything piece together as I'm listening. That makes sense. Yeah, I feel you. Um, so how about this? after you rewatch it tomorrow, email me. So I'm gonna be looking for you to email me by like seven tomorrow. Okay. All right. Uh, and I already know you, you're going to get in there and do it before then, but email me and then um, like write down the questions that you do have. And it would be even more beautiful if you uh, like took a screenshot or told me what like what the timestamp is on here or whatever. So I can go back and listen to what I said and reword it, re-explain it. Okay, cool. Appreciate it. Right, of course. Kanye, what's up, boo? What's up, babe? You good? Yeah. Okay, perfect. All right, y'all. Uh, well, hold on. Let me see the chat. Let me see the chat. I will talk. Who's iPhone? Um, iPhone, I will talk to you. I had questions, but this was my first Zoom and I didn't know how to do anything. Who's Who is this iPhone? Let me know. You can send it in a chat. You can, oh, eight, oh okay. Yeah, yeah. I got you. I got you. I got you. You know, you locked in. Ain't no switching up. You a mentee. You a mentee now. So don't worry. I got you. We start our classes. Um, next week and also you already know why I'm so proud of you for being in here because age don't stop nothing age don't stop nothing all ages are in here learning so I'm very proud of you being in here um and don't worry I'm gonna get you right I'll email you after this class but all right y'all I had a really great class with y'all um I'm very excited I'm super excited to start this year do not forget, listen, I keep these class sizes small for a reason because that way I am able to give you individual attention. Ask questions ask questions I promise you I'm going to email you back I promise you I will email you back I will answer that question because it's going to make me hype it makes me hype okay so I'll send this to y'all tonight what's what's tonight Monday night the loving hip-hop come I don't know I gotta go watch some trashy tv and relax and get ready to trade tomorrow all right uh no problem I'll see y'all Wednesday all right now listen oh listen 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 Y'all do have homework. Y'all do have homework. What I want y'all to do is the same way that we pulled that stock map up. And I'm going to, when I send y'all the recording, I'm going to uh, write the link for the two websites that we looked at, YChart and Finviz. What I want y'all to do is go on the stock map and I want you to write two companies that you like per sector, per sector, okay? So we know there's 11 sectors. So you should have 22 stocks written out that you like. You need to tell me why you like it, okay? I literally had somebody do this exercise once and I, I will never forget. Like on her list was Google and her response was, cause Google me B. And I was like, okay, I, I rock with it, right? Tell me why you do that. Now, when you go in there, they cannot, those two stocks per sector. So if you're in the uh, Technology sector, you cannot write down two stocks that are both in the semiconductor industry. So don't write NVIDIA and AMD. They need to be in two different industries. All right, y'all got that? I'll write it in the homework as well, but I will see y'all Wednesday. Bye.